In this video, I will build a 3D printed functional robot arm that can be used for useful robots. It's no secret that robots have been gaining more and more interest recently. Robots have been used for decades in industrial environments, but we seem to be still waiting for our personal home robots. And yes, we do have simple machines like vacuum cleaners. But we still keep up the hopes for our home personal assistant. In this time, however, artificial intelligence is growing exponentially, increasing possibilities quickly. There are several companies rushing towards making useful real robots. And it's no doubt that more companies will start up and follow. The only problem is that the current robots are ridiculously expensive, so not affordable for most people. However, for DIY enthusiasts, this is great news as well. Applications like AI cameras are becoming more accessible and cheaper, making them suitable for DIY robotics. Combined with 3D printing, you can create your own DIY home robots exactly how you want it. This is exactly the goal of Glevotech. Life is better when you build it. In this video, I will be designing a robot arm that has similar motion ranges as a human arm. The arm will be designed hanging down instead of upwards like most common robot arms are. I am planning to make the project files available for personal use later on. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to see the updates. I started with the 3D design in CAD software. It's designed with Autodesk Inventor. It uses a link system for the up and down movement of the elbow. By doing this, I reduced the weight of the forearm by moving the servo away from the moving parts. This causes less stress on the upper servos. It has a total of 6 servos. The large ones are the common MG996R, which I chose for their strong metal gearing and reliability. The small ones are the SG90 micro servos, which uses all plastic gears. The arm has 6 degrees of freedom. The first one is the shoulder. Second is the elbow controlled through the linkage. Third is the elbow side movement. Fourth is the wrist up and down motion. Fifth is twisting of the wrist. And the last is the gripper motion. Time for 3D printing and making it real. Now it's time to assemble everything. The arm is designed with ease of assembly in mind and with possibility to replace parts or to modify for different purposes. It uses standard bolts and nuts and most of the servos are mounted with their included screws. To reduce stress on the upper servos, I designed some attachments for rubber bands or a spring. This takes some load off the servos that will support the whole weight of the arm. This should give the servos a longer lifetime and increased lifting weight. I did the same for the shoulder. Before continuing, it's a good idea to test everything separately. After my approval, I built a base for it. Firstly, I made some extensions for the circle cables. Then I made a board to conveniently connect all servos to an Arduino. I 
As for most of my projects, I'm using an Arduino Mega. As a power supply, I'm using an old computer power supply. All you have to do is find these two wires and connect them together to activate the output. Then find the 5V wires. The color and rating are often displayed on the side. As the first test, I put some potentiometers on the breadboard and connected them to the Arduino. For more grip, I attached some fingers from a rubber glove. Each potentiometer controls one servo or one joint. With these I could control the whole arm quite well already. Although it was not convenient and quite time consuming. That's why I used the potentiometers to build an arm controller. The arm controller is basically a mini model of the arm. I can control every joint separately in a more natural way. I 3D printed the design and assembled everything together. I also added the switch, which will be used later. Controlling the arm with this goes a lot smoother and quite easy. Although it is a bit tricky to do at first. The arm itself performed quite well and is actually fun to play around with. Most of the issues is user error. The trickiest part is letting go of the object. And of course, it doesn't always go right. So, it was time to move on to program positions. By clicking the button, I can send the current position of all servos to the computer. These values can be programmed into the Arduino to make it move to those set positions automatically. Immediately, you can see the movements are a lot smoother and less shaky. Overall, it is just more controlled and more precise. Another test was letting it pick up a wooden block and moving it up on a raised platform. Afterwards, it takes it back down and this goes on in a continuous loop. I think we can call this a success. The movements are pretty accurate and consistent. Although a bit shaky, but that is the nature of these servos. For these budget servo motors, I am pretty satisfied with the results so far. <laughs> I did have some problems along the way. The servo for elbow side movement started slipping gears and broke down. I opened it up to see what caused it. I found that it uses plastic gears. The reason why I chose the MG996R is because of its strong metal gearbox. This one only has one metal gear and the rest is made of plastic. I bought these servos online in China thinking they were genuine Tower Pro 996R with their metal gearbox. It appears to be these are counterfeit. That resulted in this. The final gear started slipping and grinded off the plastic teeth. I replaced the servo with another one and it has been holding up fine so far. I also kept the broken servo for replacement parts. This project is only the beginning. I will improve the design further and I will make the 3D STL files available as well as the electronic diagrams and Arduino code. And further on, I'm going to use this to develop more robotic projects and build something really useful. As always, all questions and comments and suggestions are greatly appreciated, so don't hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section below. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.